followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we established yesterday that the believer in Christ is not in need of direction. That direction is part of the, new, the regeneration package. When you got born again, part of what was inherent in your DNA was the ability to be led or the leading of the spirit. We saw from the word of God that they that are led by the spirit. Talking about the union between the believer and Christ. That where he goes, I go. Where he stops, I stop. Because there's a union between me and him. I am in him, he is in me. So I am led. I am not going to be led. It is they that are led that are the sons of God. That means part of your sonship package is divine direction, the ability to be led, the ability to follow the leading of the spirit. And we establish that the Father has bestowed upon us all blessings, every blessing we ever require. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly in Christ. So the believer, therefore, has been blessed with everything he will ever need. The only thing the believer requires is to acknowledge what he has been blessed with. To acknowledge it. The believer is not in need of faith. The believer is in the faith. You are in the faith. That's why you are called believer. You are in the faith. You know, somebody asked me somewhere, but the Bible talks about small faith, great faith, little faith. And, you know, all of those classifications of faith took place in the Gospels. That was before Jesus died. So all of those little faith, no faith, um, great faith, were all classifications of faith under the Old Testament. Still part of the Old Testament. Because under the Old Testament, faith is a substance of things. Of things, of things. So when Jesus saw what they did with things, with their reaction, with their action towards something, he defined it as faith because they were still under the dispensation of things. But after Jesus rose from the dead, it's no more faith in things, it's faith in him. We came into Christ. So that's why Paul now says uh, in the book of Philippians, he says, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. I am crucified or I have been crucified. Not I am. The original text says I have been crucified with Christ. I have been, not I am. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, the faith, by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. What is the faith of the Son of God? The scriptures, you know, defines that Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. So when you came into Christ, you came into faith. The believer does not require faith. He is in the faith. That's why he is called believer. Believer. He is called believer because he believes. The message he had was the message of faith. When he received that message, he received faith. It is that faith that got him saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. You are saved by grace through faith. Without faith, you wouldn't have been saved. That you are saved means you are in the faith. The faith of the Son of God. So the believer is not in need of faith. The believer is in the faith. But the believer must acknowledge. He must have the epignosis of that faith. The accurate, exact, definite knowledge of that faith that he is in. He is in the faith. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So to acknowledge here is far more weightier than assent. It's to have precise understanding and information. To acknowledge is to have precise, exact, accurate understanding and information. 
The communication of your faith becomes effectual when you acknowledge or when you have precise or accurate exact knowledge of every good thing that is already in you. God is not going to put it. He has already put it in you, but you must acknowledge the leading of the spirit. You must acknowledge the blessings that you have been blessed with, all of it. You must have the accurate knowledge of the blessing and of every good thing that is in you in Christ. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now you know as believers, because of lack of adequate teaching, oftentimes you see believers looking for a man of God somewhere to give them a prophetic word. A prophetic word. And you hear Christians asking somebody, do you have a prophet over your life? Who is the prophet over your life? Who is the prophet over your life? You have Jesus in your life. No prophet is as qualified as Jesus. Am I teaching here? No prophet is as qualified as Jesus. You don't need a prophet who is always seeing things for you. Jesus is more than enough. Anybody looking for prophets has not been well taught. Number one. Number two, his mind is not renewed. Number three, he's a victim of ignorance. No man needs a prophet, a prophet over his life. And the scripture they read for you is Amos chapter 3 verse 7. That's usually the scripture they read. Saying, surely the Lord will do nothing but reveals his secret unto his servant, the prophet. This scripture defines the role of the Old Testament prophets. It does not define the role of the New Testament prophet. What Amos was saying is that whatever God wants to do, he had to reveal it by the prophets. Which prophets? The prophets of the Old Testament, which the last of them, who was the greatest of them, was John the Baptist, who is not as great as a new convert in the New Testament. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. The greatest of all the Old Testament prophets in that line up, that the Lord can do nothing without revealing it to them. Those prophets, the, the greatest of them was John the Baptist. Jesus said it, among all that are born of women, None is as great as John the Baptist. From Moses to Elijah, they were all born of women. To Jeremiah, to Ezekiel, they were all born of women. To Isaiah, they were all born of women. None of them was as great as John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom, the least among us is greater than John the Baptist. That means... When he was saying the Lord will do nothing, he was talking about the messianic prophecies. The prophecies concerning the Christ because God had to prophesy what the Christ will do. That's why when Jesus came, he became the fulfillment of the prophecies because everything he did was according as it was prophesied. That's what scripture meant, but by that the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. Talking about the class of Old Testament prophets. Now, the Old Testament prophets were called prophets. The New Testament prophets are called prophets. But the, even though they are called the same title, their functions differ. They are not functioning in the same category. What do I mean by that? I'm going to show you very clearly from the scripture. I, I, am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? So the role of the Old Testament prophets were to reveal God's plan of redemption. To reveal God's plan of redemption. They spoke about the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. That was their major role. All the Old Testament prophets had their major role in speaking of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow that suffering. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Next verse. Of which salvation the prophets 
have inquired. These are the prophets that Amos was talking about when he said the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Which prophets? The prophets which have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Next verse, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was on them. The spirit of Christ was on them. The prophecy of Elijah, the prophecy of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, was by the spirit of Christ on them. Why the spirit of Christ? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy on them was to give witness to Jesus. The spirit of prophecy on them was to testify concerning the Christ. They testified of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. It is that class of prophets that the scripture referred to in Amos that the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now follow me carefully because it's very fundamental. Especially in the world of today. They reveal God's agenda to save. Luke 24, 25 to 27. You know, they reveal God's agenda to save. They had foretold Christ's redemptive work. And Peter clearly opens it here in 2 Peter 1, 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Next verse. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. The prophecy of scripture, which was the foretelling of the Christ, did not come by any private interpretation. And no man stood up by his will and prophesied the scriptures. When the gift of prophecy is in operation by the endowment of the Holy Spirit, we prophesy by our will. We prophesy by our will. No prophecy flows out of a born again Holy Ghost believer that the believer was not willing to open his mouth and speak. The Holy Ghost does not open your mouth. The Holy Ghost leaves the impression in your heart. Then you open your mouth willingly to speak the prophecy. But the prophecy of the scripture was not by the will of man. It was not of any private interpretation. Holy men were moved. And as they were moved, they spoke. And as they spoke, God anointed another set of men who gathered the materials of their speakings, collected it together and gave it to us as the scripture. It didn't come by the will of man. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. Because they were a specific class of prophets. And their assignment was clear. To foretell the Christ. Because the spirit of Christ was on them. Speaking through them. Concerning the sufferings of Christ. And the glory that should follow. If you are following, say I hear you. Now. I said that to say this. So private interpretation there will mean private source. No scripture is of any private source. Meaning that all scripture came from the same origin. That is to say, what makes the scripture scripture is that when you run through the scripture from Genesis to Malachi, the message is one. Different books Different times, different writers. When the books were compared, they were saying the same thing. What were they saying? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. That is why none of them is of any private source. They all came from the same Holy Ghost inspiration. And when a man is under the Holy Ghost, he interprets the scripture with accuracy. No, see, Interpreting the Bible is not psychology. It's not philosophy. That you are a professor in psychology doesn't mean you can interpret the scriptures. The scriptures are not an academic book. They are spiritual. 
So it takes the breath of the Holy Ghost to interpret the scriptures because they were written by the breath of the Holy Ghost. So that's what it means. The spirit of Christ. A Christ testifying spirit. Because the people under the Old Testament didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. So the spirit of Christ had to come on certain individuals to speak. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. Only certain individuals had the Holy Ghost come on them and go. But the general public, nobody had access to the Holy Ghost. Why? They didn't have capacity to carry the Holy Ghost. Why? The Holy Ghost was part of the redemptive plan of God and the Holy Ghost was for an appointed time after redemption has been provided. Isaiah did declare this, declared in Isaiah 64 verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither had the eyes seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. What was that prepared? Redemption. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. That was what God prepared for all of mankind. That was God's redemptive plan. Isaiah captured it in his prophecy. And that is where Paul took it from and reinforced it with interpretation and explanation to establish doctrine. He took it from Isaiah and repeated it with proper explanation and teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Next verse. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that, that he loves. Now, he's quoting from Isaiah, but because he's explaining it, he now uses phrases that will bring the spirit of the message. Isaiah said they that waited. Paul now in his own teaching said, them that he loves. Okay? Talking about the Old Testament saints. But look at the one that pertained to us there. But God, they have not seen it, but we, they, their eyes didn't see. Their ears didn't hear. Hearing they heard but didn't hear. Seeing they saw but didn't see. But for us, God had revealed what they didn't see, what they didn't hear. God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things. Yea. The deep things of God. We have access into the deep things of God. The deep things of God are not kept away from us. The deep things of God have been provided to us. We have access to the deep things of God. Yeah, they are kept for us. They are ours. They are for us. Not just for us. They are in us. All we are required to do is acknowledge. Hallelujah. Acknowledge. Such at all things, yet the deep things of God. Somebody say very loud, I have access into the deep things of God. God has revealed them to us. Look at the next verse. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so. The things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Next verse. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. I'd like you to shout it very loud. I have not received the spirit of the world. Say it again. I do not have the spirit of this world. We have not received the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God. Say with me, I have received the spirit which is of God. Say the spirit in God is the spirit in me. I and God are in union. Where he goes, I go. Where he stays, I stay. The believer has direction in his DNA. You will not wander in the dark. Say, I have the light of life. 
God never used or uses prophets to reveal his word and will to his sons. Why? He gave us his spirit. He gave us his spirit. We are not men of the flesh. But in the church, he gives us prophets. He gives us prophets in the church. But in our personal lives, he does not give us prophets. He gives us his spirit. You didn't hear me. He gives us prophets in the church to equip us, teach us, strengthen us, establish us. And to help us understand the spirit of Christ given to us. So that in our personal lives, we, are, we acknowledge the leading of the spirit within us. Prophets don't follow us around. Telling us when to sleep, when not to sleep, when to eat, when not to eat, when to travel. Where any prophet doing that to you is a witch. He is out to manipulate your life. No. He gave us his spirit to abide with us in our individual lives forever. But he gives us prophets in the church. In the church. Where are prophets? In the church. Not in your house. Don't bring any so-called prophet to your house to give you midnight visions. You are not a man of the flesh. You are born of God. If the prophet can see the vision, you too can see the vision. God does not have stepchildren. Kabota Kanaka. God does not have stepchildren. All of us are sons. Nobody has more access to God than you. He's our father. He's not our grandfather. He's our father. God does have grandsons. You're not a grandson of God. As many as receive him to them, give him power to become grandchildren. Power to become what? Now are we the great grandchildren of God. What does he say? Now are we what? The sons of God. No stepchildren. Anybody who says a prophet, he has access to God. You too, you have same access. Prophets are not given to control our private lives. Prophets are given in the church. And I'm going to give it to you right now in the scriptures. Because we're establishing you in doctrine. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28. And God had set somewhere in the church. First, apostles where in the church. Secondly, prophets where in the church. Thirdly, teachers where in the church. After that, miracles where in the church. Then gifts of healings where in the church. Helps, governments, diversities of tongues where God has set them in the church. He that descended is he that ascended. And when he ascended, what did he do? He gave gifts to men. Where are those gifts supposed to operate? In the church. For the perfecting of the saints. So that the saints can do the work of the ministry. That's the whole essence of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. To perfect saints. Who will go out and do ministry? Not to see your phone number and house address. That's not the assignment of prophets. The assignment of prophets is to equip you. How does your phone number and house address equip you? How does your family history equip you? When Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget the past. I press forward. It's God himself said, you shall forget about the former things for behold. So why will a prophet be giving you your history? What do you need your history for? Moreover, if any man be in Christ, 
So where is the history coming from? In Christ, you have no past. You only have a future. Glory to God. I'm teaching now. I'm teaching with vehemence because illiteracy in the body of Christ is too high. It's of high propensity. Is that English like that? Illiteracy in the body of Christ is of high propensity. Let me repeat it again. Because that grammar came by the Holy Ghost. Illiteracy in the body of Christ is of high... Exactly. Clap for yourselves. Christians are looking for prophets who will tell them what the future holds. We don't, we are not ignorant of what the future holds. We know what the future holds. The part of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter. I mean, it's clear. All things are yours. Both the present and the future, they are all yours. Case settled. You don't need any private prophet to follow you around with calabash. You are not a man of the flesh. You are a man of the spirit. That which is born of the spirit and God has given you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost is there to be a witness with your spirit. God doesn't guide believers by prophets. He guides believers by the Holy Ghost. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he, he will. He didn't say he will be one of them. He said he, sole ministry of the Holy Ghost, he will guide you into all the truth. He will show you things to come. In the Old Testament, men didn't have the Holy Ghost. So certain people called prophets had to be speaking things. And even what the prophets were saying, they didn't understand. John 16, 12. In the New Testament, the Holy Ghost is the revealer in the family. He is the spirit of what? Revelation. He is the revealer. His name is Paracletos. He's the paraclet. The revealer. He's the revealer. He will show you things to come. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. He will guide who? You into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Next verse. Next verse. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. The job of the Holy Ghost is to show you things to come. Why? Because that is the way God designed it to function in the New Testament. He is the paraclete. Another Greek word for him is alos, meaning the same revealer. The same revealer like Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the same like Jesus, just that a form changed. He said, the comforter in my name. The same alos, the same revealer. Paraclete is a revealer of information. And listen, listen carefully. This is fundamental. He will not reveal it externally. When the Holy Ghost comes inside you, his revelations will not be external. Because we are not outside people. We are inside out people. We are not outside people. We are inside out people. The real you is inside. The real you is not outside. That's why we don't walk by sight. Because whatever we see is irrelevant. It is what we see that matters. Because what we see inside can change what goes on outside. I'm, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. The doctor's report is not final. It's a suggestion. 
The doctor's report is not final. What is it? It's a suggestion waiting for you to either accept or reject. And whatever you bind on it, and whatever you lose on it, it's in your hand. We are not outside in people. We are inside out people. We don't take color from the environment. We put our color on the environment. That it is like that doesn't mean that's the end. You can change it. Satola Bahata. You can do what? Change it. There is power at work in you. There is power at work in you. And that power has an element called dunamis. What is dunamis? Dunamis is dynamite. What is the job of a dynamite? When a dynamite explodes, what does it do? It changes and rearranges things. So when you shock yourself in the Holy Ghost and you begin to unleash power, you will get to a point in prayer where your prayer starts exploding and changing and rearranging things and where they said it cannot happen. Right there, it happens in their very eye because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous power available that is dynamic in his workings somebody shout the power is inside me say I am not an outside in person I am an inside out person power is inside me let me tell you this year you will prove all your enemies wrong Every evil prophecy that has been spoken concerning your life, you will disappoint them this year. They will wait and waste. You didn't hear what I said. I said they will wait and waste. He said, when we came to you, we did not teach you that when you pray, the answer is nay and yea. It is not nay and yea. It is not yea and nay. He said, but we said that all the promises of God are in him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. In John 14, 16. And I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be where so the guidance of the Holy Ghost is not external, is internal. He will be in you. He will be in you. He will not be outside you. He will be with you and in you to guide you. He will be in you. So, the leading of the spirit is acknowledged internally. He will dwell in all believers and he will be with us forever. That means he will teach us forever. So, hence, John translated it like this. First John chapter 2 verse 20. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know some things all things. Look at 1 John 2 27. But the anointing which you have received of him in you and you need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing. Where is that same anointing? Inside you teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it has taught you you shall abide where? In him. John was there when Jesus pre-informed them of the indwelling of the spirit. John was there. That's why he was talking about it. He was there when Jesus promised them that he will send another comforter who will abide in you. So John now said, look, the unction, that word unction is anointing. That's why you don't need to carry Goya oil. The anointing which you have received 
receive death. <laughs> For the purpose of clarity. So that they know what I'm talking about. Because that at day is the key there. Which you have received day. Eh? Is that future or past? Say, I have received. Say, it's in me now. Eh? You don't need koya oil. The main oil is inside you. The anointing. Tatole betetete nagamama. Juju bratakama. Hulata, hulata. Hulata, hulata. But the anointing which you have received of him abided where? In you. And you need not that any man teleguide you. You need not that any man monitor you and remote control you with so-called prophecies. Let me shock you. The job of the New Testament prophet is not to prophesy. Prophecies are a collective assignment. Jesus collected it from them and distributed it to all of us. When the New Testament opened, Jesus took prophecy from the prophets. He took visions from the prophets. He took dreams from the prophets and gave to all of us. He collected it from them. So now, the prophet does not have the exclusive reserve to prophesy. It's our collective inheritance in Christ. Somebody says, how did that happen? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> now, take note. Take note. Prophets in the church today are teachers of the word. The work of prophets is to teach the finished work of Christ. To teach the finished work of Christ. They are to unveil Jesus' words to us. His death, burial, and resurrection. Not who to marry, when to travel, who not to marry. That's not the job of a prophet. And that's not a ministry in the, old, in the New Testament. Ephesians 4, 11 to 14. To equip us to do the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith. Of the knowledge of the son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That's what the prophets are supposed to do. To equip us. They teach us to walk. And receive the ministry of the spirit within us. They teach us how to walk in the spirit. They teach us how to receive that ministry of the spirit inside us. So that we on ourselves, we hear God. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep. Are you a sheep? Or are you a goat? Every sheep. The proof that he's a sheep. Is that he will hear the voice of the shepherd. In fact, Kipatanaka, Jesus said the voice of a stranger. Exactly. They will not even hear it. They will hear it. That means we are totally free from confusion. Because what confuses you is when God is talking and stranger is talking. You don't know who is who. Now you say even a stranger's voice, no matter how loud, loud they talk, you will not hear. Say, I am deaf. To the voice of the stranger. Said very loud, I am deaf to the voice of the stranger by my nature. I am naturally deaf to the voice of a stranger. Say, it is not a mistake. It is the way I was constructed. Never to hear the voice of a stranger. So, if I'm no more hearing the voice of a stranger, I know that every time I hear the voice, it is God talking. I cannot be confused. No confusion. I say no confusion. I say no confusion. In every aspect of your life, there will be no confusion. Somebody shout, I have the spirit of revelation. Say it very loud, I have the spirit of revelation. We don't jump around looking for prophetic words 
We don't jump around seeking for what Joel has already distributed to all of us. Joel 2, 27, 28 was the prophecy. The fulfillment, Peter recalled it in Acts 2, 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall... Where are sons and daughters? Are you all here? What are we all supposed to do? Somebody say, I prophesy right now. My steps are ordered by the Lord. I didn't hear an amen to me. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. No more prophets. God took it from prophets in the New Testament and distributed it to all believers. No prophet has the exclusive reserve of prophesying. That's why when people wake up at the beginning of every year and begin to prophesy, most of their prophecy is to politicians. It shows you that they have missed God. How can God's entire attention? Is God a politician? God is not part of any political party. The only thing that has the interest of God is the church. So if prophets are really prophesying, they should be prophesying to the church. What is the move of God? What is God saying to his body? Yes, now because when the Holy Spirit comes, he will take that which is Jesus' own and he will reveal to us. He won't reveal to us which governor will die. He won't reveal to us whether Asorok will catch fire. That is not the exclusive assignment of the Holy Ghost. They are hearing about governors that nobody has prophesied to the body of Christ. Nobody among them has told the body of Christ what the agenda of God is for the now, for the church. It's only that governor, politics, America will do this, China will do that, Israel will do that. Hey! Jesus has no investment in those things. The only investment is the church. He purchased the church with his blood. So if he is speaking, he should be speaking to his church. Can I talk to somebody here? Somebody look at you and do, I see, tell him me too, I see. But say your own first. Because me too, I see. Say your own, let me see what you see. Because I have seen. So things will be tough, tell him, lie. Lie. Nothing will be tough. I am in him. And in him, things are not tough. I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. So things may be tough for the world, but things cannot be tough for me. Because where I come from, we change things. And what do we use in changing things? Miracles. Where, where are the miracles? In eternity. Where is eternity? In my heart. Let me close. Are you blessed? Male and female will prophesy. It's not just female. And it's not just male. Since Pentecost, there has been multiplied millions prophesying. We can prophesy, we can see visions, and we can dream dreams. Every attempt to bring Old Testament prophets to prophesy in the New Testament is aborted. Because that's what the church has been trying to do. To bring an Old Testament module to operate in the New Testament. Where one man is a superstar. All others are, are, are slaves. At the mercy of one man. Whatever he says is what we follow. No, 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 no. No, God doesn't have stepchildren. We are the sons of God. We hear from God. I say we hear from God. Even in the book of Acts, when prophets prophesied, their prophecies were judged. Bible says, even when they prophesy, we should judge their prophecy. We bring their prophecy to the judgment of scripture. If it doesn't align with the word of God, you put it in a dustbin. Even when all of us are prophesying, it's not every prophecy we carry. We bring all the prophecies and put them in scripture. If they don't agree with scripture, we say, brother, you tried, but you didn't get it this time. Put it aside. Next. Acts 11.25 Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. 
And when they had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year, they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first. Where? In Antioch. And in these days came prophets. Came. Came. This is in the New Testament. Came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus. And signified by the spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. He gave a prophecy. And that prophecy came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. It came to pass. Are you following? These prophets came. Their objective was not prophecy. Where their objective was to teach the world. They taught. Because that's the job of prophecy in the New Testament. They taught the world. And even when they prophesied that there was going to be famine. In Acts 15.32. And Judas and Silas. Being prophets. Silas. Being prophets, also themselves, exalted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. They exalted and confirmed, even though they were prophets. That means the job of prophets was to teach, to exalt, and to confirm. What does it mean to confirm? The word confirm in the original Greek, it means to establish by teaching. To confirm people means to establish them by teaching. So their ministry is to strengthen, to establish people by teaching. That's the ministry of the New Testament prophet. Because in Hebrews he says, for this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel in those days. I will put my law in their heart and I will write it in their mind. And they shall not need to be taught to know the Lord. All of them shall know me from the greatest to the smallest. Why? I will be merciful to their iniquities. All of them. Every one of them will know me. They wouldn't need to be teleguided by a prophet. They will know me. Say with me, I know God. Say it very loud. Now say with me, I hear God. Say it very loud. So one of the characteristics of the New Testament is revelation. I prophesy over you. Throughout the course of this year, you will swim in revelation. Stand on your feet and shut the eyes of my understanding. Be enlightened. I receive the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of Christ. Say, I will not lack revelation. Throughout this year, revelation. Open your mouth and pray in tongues. Receive revelation. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't be economical in your prayer. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let the rivers of living water flow out of your belly. Pray, pray, pray. I will not lack direction. I will not lack revelation. I will not lack insight. I will not lack concepts. I will not lack ideas. Holy Ghost. Mambrandonga zogelebo shaya. Ila baba baboro sekila nama. Elebo koroto zegere kenaga. Olaga goraba. Elebo jatera nemo sataya. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He that speaketh in tongues. Speaketh mysteries. Speaketh mysteries. The glory of God was ordained as our glory in the mystery. I am led by the Spirit. I'm a son of God. I have access to revelation. I have access to, to prophecy. I have access to discernment. I have access to wisdom. I have access to insight. I have access to ideas. I am born of God. In the name of Jesus. Oh my word. What a teaching today. Man, we're going to go into a time of prayer right now. Don't be in a hurry to leave. I beg of you. Don't be in a hurry to leave. Let's pray together. 
You pray by praying. He's wanting to learn. It's another thing to pray. So let's go into a moment of prayer together. And at the end of the prayer, I'll be back to share a few moments, moments with you before we wrap up. Happy praying. Lift your two hands and begin to thank him for all of this. Begin to thank him for growth in knowledge. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Begin to thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Begin to thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. Just praise and bless him. Thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Christ. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Begin to thank him that Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Begin to thank him for money coming from every direction. Go ahead and give him thanks. 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 Zimona koto lida barabash. Mengro na zikele de boska. Babara katenenga. Elemo roko tuska. Bereke tila nama. Mereko tola ninge. Elemo roko tunda. Mama marene kinda. Jegele de boroka. Sebere keta nange. Elemo zakilena. Marando nenge lena. Egere te sekila. Egebo jakayana. Elemo roko tuska. Bebere keta lana. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. Mangere te zobula. Brenda ka. Scotiba, Engele Monoske, Babara Katoda, Brenda Sukalana, Mamra Shakalana Gamari Katana Gaga. Give him thanks and praise. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear that amen like thunder? Stretch your hands and let's begin to call the things that be not as though they were everything that you know the word of god guarantees you in this life begin to call it forth i want to hear your authoritative voices let's pray together call the things that be not as though they were even god who quickened the dead by calling the things that be not as though they were babaro kotuna kalana jekolodo boska talana ma Babara Katula na Maka Lepira, Babara Katina Kalema, no Sokotolena. Father, we call for creative miracles. 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 Opportunities, favors, increase, enlargement. We call for favors. We call for connections. We call for companies. We call for jobs. We call for health. We call for favors. We call for marriage. We call for fruitfulness. Matukalaba. We call for health, we call for favor, we call for employment, we call for jobs, we call for admissions, we call for money, we call for school fees, we call for houses, we call for lands, we call for cars, we call for cars, we call for jobs, we call for investors, we call for connections, we call for Opportunities, Mangranta Scupeleda, Ekebo Shakale de Bosaya, Ingalana Maru, Ekele de Basho Karanagasa, Ekebo Suta Lanama, Ekele de Kibaso Talada Babaya, Ekele de Boshe Kale de Bosata, Ekele Borakata, Mangranta Sukele de Bara, Mangranta Kele, Bebereke Tuskatala da Barakatina Kaya, Ekebo Shayada, 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 Ekebo Shayada. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it is don't let that amen come on a note of finality. 
command the devil to take his hands off of your job all your family of your money of your marriage of your husband of your wife of your children command the devil take his hands off in the name of jesus let's pray together in my name you shall cast out devils in my name you shall cast out devils every satanic aggression every satanic harassment every resistance every demonic resistance Satan, take your hands off. Tenaga, of our jobs, of our companies, of our careers, of our wives, of our husbands. Barika Tonagaya, Hegeboshaya, 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 Hegeboshaya. Satan, take your hands off. Bareto le de Baraka Tonaga. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it is done, let that amen come like thunder. Listen very carefully. Two thousand years ago, Jesus defeated the devil permanently. You are the one in authority. You are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. They are under your feet every wizard every witch every devil is under your feet i said it's under your feet i said it's under your feet fear is under your feet shame is under your feet i'm not hearing that amen somebody i want you to stretch your hands towards us and let that amen become like thunder as i pray right now in the name of jesus barriers are broken obstacles broken resistance broken Whatever is not planted by my father is rooted out. Wherever they are gathered to resist your advancement, they are scattered. In the name of Jesus, by the favor of God, your business stands strong. Your mountain stands strong. Your career stands strong. Your job stands strong. Your marriage stands strong. Your family stands strong. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break the control of Satan over your marriage, over your children. Satan, take your hands off. In the name of Jesus, I command favor, favor, favor. Receive jobs, employments, receive admissions, receive increase. In the name of Jesus, every sickness be healed. I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke disease. I rebuke disease. Terminal disease, you are terminated. Terminated. High blood pressure, stop. Blood sugar, be flushed out. In the name of Jesus, blood disease, be healed. Be healed. Skin disease, be healed. In the name of Jesus, ministry expand. Career expand. Company expand. Business expand. Receive the grace for evangelism. Receive the grace for evangelism. Receive the grace for evangelism. Receive favor make money make money make money make money engage industry solve societal problems receive ideas concepts insights favors ideas concepts insights favors connections new relationships receive them in the name of jesus any relationship that is subtracting from you i command divine trouble to end that relationship in the name of jesus receive relationships of value receive relationships of impact receive relationships of progress receive relationships of edification receive it in the name of jesus this year on every side you will record victory record victory record victory record victory record victory in the name of jesus it is done in jesus precious name if you believe it is done, let that amen come like thunder. Go ahead and celebrate. Celebrate increase. Celebrate expansion. Celebrate increase. Celebrate expansion. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Ce 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 celebrate. Oh my goodness, what a time of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. 
I know that answers are already flowing. Now listen carefully. The Bible tells us, study to be quiet. There's a quality of meditation that is required. Brother Paul will say to Brother Timothy, till I come, give attendance to reading and to meditation. Say, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to all. As you pray in the spirit some more, listen. Pray, listen. Pray, listen. The Holy Spirit will show you what to do. Either a change of diet or where not to go or what to say or what to write or who to contact or what to do about something you've been confused about. There will be a direction. It's coming clearly. It's coming clearly. I want you to get ready. It's coming clearly. And I trust God for you throughout the course of this year. You walk in the spirit. You'll be led by the spirit. And the spirit of God will lead you into witty inventions. You will explode on every side. In the name of Jesus. I'm excited, friends. You want to invite people to be part of tomorrow's. But remember, we have the 6 a.m. broadcast, 12 noon broadcast. And then we're back here at Harvest of Answers at 10 p.m. GMT plus one. You want to invite a friend, a family member, as we grow together in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ.